Jason Page. Oh! Look at Jason. Hello, everybody. Captain America, please. Let him be first. I do uh, all the beat sounds. I mean, it, it's the, the bass drum. And you get the That's the low bass, the sub bass. And then you can get the Mongolian kind of sound, which is the actual. And then the snare drums, the various. The hi-hats. And putting them all together is a Any more questions for Jason, guys? There it is, there it is. <laughs> what was it like when Michael Jackson on his 20th anniversary tour? The 20th, 30th anniversary uh, at Madison Square Garden happened to be Michael Jackson's last United States concert. And it was, it was, it was overwhelming, to say the least. There was so much excitement in the room, you could barely even hear what was going on because people were screaming. The audience was incredible. And one thing that people don't know is you watch the videos of that show. In between every song was a 15 to 20 minute break. So uh, the, most of the band didn't understand that either. They would do a song and then have to wait 15 minutes for everybody to get reset, more dancers to come out, camera people had to go into different positions. It was basically like taping a, a, a television show, but at a concert. So at one point, uh, Marlon Brando came out to announce something. I don't know if you guys know Marlon Brando is, but he's a very, very famous actor. From back in the day, he was in The Godfather, and a whole bunch of other things. And he comes out in his wheelchair, and he starts making a speech and the audience was so disrupted by having to wait that they started booing him in the middle of the concert so there was this swing from the most excitement that any group of people has ever experienced since Jason Page sang the Pokemon theme song <laughs> to the to booing the, the the most famous actor of their of a generation for taking too long and and saying something uh, socially relevant, that people just, they wanted more Michael and they had to wait 15 minutes. It was a very exceptional thing. I was on the stage with eight other uh, singers and the stage was so big that we had to have monitors, video monitors on the front floor so we could see what was happening on that side of the stage down to the left so that we could watch cues that Michael was giving that we couldn't see because there were so many people. It was, a, it was a, a, an incredible, incredible experience. Thank you for asking it. What a good question. Come on, guys. Any questions? Oh, down in the front, yeah. Uh, do you ever get fed up with Pokemon being asked to do the Pokemon theme like, over and over and over again? Well, um, this is a brand new experience for me. I've only been asked to do this for the past year. Um, for most of the history of Pokemon, I have not been associated with it in a visual way. All of my friends know, and I have it on my resume, and if you know who I am, you can search it under the credits. There's the Pokemon underneath of it, but but I hadn't put myself out until the Pokemon Go craze happened, and the media started contacting me, and there was no way for me to avoid all of the requests. And at that point, so I'm so I'm not fed up with it yet because it's only been about a, not even a year since Pokemon Go came out. I've only performed the song uh, once with a band live, um, and a couple of times with loop player loop jams. And tomorrow I'll be performing some other Pokemon songs that I've never done before. So I'm not sick of it yet. But I can imagine how, how it is. Do you get sick of the song when it comes on in the front of the, the show? No, it's like it's part of the it's part of the culture. So I can imagine if I were to do this for 20 years, perhaps. But there's a lot of other things that I have that I can offer that are uh, that people, just people don't know about. 
that I can start to let people know about, and then they'll start requesting Lego Mania, Lego Mania, and other things like when you get nausea, heartburn, indigestion, upset stomach, diarrhea, Pepto Max. You know, I would get sick of that, and then I would take some Pepto Bismol if I got sick. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's a that's a very good question. Um, and when I would get if I if I do get sick of it, then I'll just change it up and make it a different thing and expand upon it. So you get a little bit of the original and you get something new to make it more uh, spiced up as 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 it should be a, a dubstep version, a house version, uh, uh, an acapella version. I mean, let's not forget you didn't just do the Pokemon. Yeah, the main theme, you also did for That's right, and that will happen tomorrow for the first time ever. I'm, I'm actually <laughs> memorizing the lyrics, because <laughs> I can't mess up the lyrics to that. Uh, and, but it's never been performed, so it's a first time situation. Besides the performance in the studio in 1998. If you can believe that, that's when, that's when that happened. <laughs> Any more questions for Jason? Yes, guys. yes, yes. What is your favorite project you've ever worked on? Ah, the favorite project I've ever, ever worked on. I think it would have to be my show that uh, is called For the Record. And it is a mashup of the movies of a particular director. Um, so for instance, we take all of the Scorsese movies, which is uh, features Joe Pesci. And you got Joe Pesci going from movie to movie, one movie to the next movie, singing songs and mixing all the movies like Raging Bull, Goodfellas, and all these movies that are real popular. And then we go to another uh, director like Zemeckis, and, and Robert Zemeckis did Forrest Gump, where you have the characters Lieutenant Dan and Forrest Gump interacting, and then you have Back to the Future, Marty, Marty, you gotta come back with me, Marty! So I get to play all of these characters, and it's also characters from movies, but I play them live on stage, so it takes on a brand new life to be performing movie characters on stage, and there were so many movies that we've done, and in each one, I get to do a whole bunch of different characters, and, and, and it keeps me on my toes, it's live in front of people, and theater is the most impactful art form. It's, it's everybody's there in the same room having this experience together. And that's, that's incredible, especially when it has meaning and, and impact and, and social relevance, and some of those movies definitely do. Um, and it's also something that we did on our own in a bar. And it wasn't driven by money, it was driven by people's passion and people's love for those directors and those director series. So when, 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 you, when you invest in something because you love it, it, it's way better than when you're investing in something because you're being paid for it. And I think part of this uh, Pokemon generation is, is about that. People are dressing up in these incredible characters because they love them. Nobody's paying anybody to be in these wonderful costumes that are exceeding any costumes you could buy because your enthusiasm is what gives you the energy to make this incredible costume. Yeah. Come on, a round of applause for these costumes, everybody. <laughs> Yes, good, good, good question. Fantastic. Like working with uh, Julio Iglesias. Enrique Iglesias. Enrique Iglesias is the. He knows how to act like a rock star, like nobody else ever. He doesn't even have to sing to be killing it. He can just come out and go. <laughs> hey, Lord! And they just, they just think that everybody melts. They melt and, he, and he'll just, he'll go up to somebody and, and he'll just put on his hands and go, hey, how you doing? And he put his hands and he just, and he just, for some reason, he, he, he plays the character of Rockstar better than anybody else I've ever met. And, and, and it's not about his singing or his songs or, or, the, or the writing, it's just about him embodying this thing. And I think part, part of it has to do with watching his father for many years be that rock star, and people sort of associate him with his father. It's a genetic transference of the rock star gene, so to speak. 
Um, and he's a really, really nice guy. And and I do like the music too. I mean, I'm, I'm just you know highlighting the, the tip of his spear, which is that that inner rock star that he engages. Um, and, and that's incredible. I did sing a couple of songs on and backgrounds on his album. And the last time I was in the UK was with him at the London Arena. So, good question. Phantom. Another from me? Hi, Jason. Hello, sir. Um, as you've uh, obviously sung the first track on theme and, and so forth, uh, video for Radio City and so forth. Yeah, yeah. So, as for the, um, the Pokemon um, fandom itself, have you take, is it become part of your life? Have you seen it accepted into your, you know, the, your kind of thing? Like, do you like it? Do, do, do you love it? Because you've done something, you've started something that has uh, enriched many Pokemon fans in many generations. So uh, you must have uh, some, become a fan of it, I'm assuming. So. Yes, yes. Um, when I understood the philosophy behind the game and, and it, it, I became a, a, a fan of of it then. I understood it from just the regular outside perspective of a really incredible uh, cartoon. But when I understood the game and this, the philosophy of each Pokemon that you catch, that you evolve into its highest self, and then you 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 treat people in your life like that. You're basically having all of your friends and you want your friends to be the best friend that they want to be, to expand into their own individual power. You know, and, and each friend, even if it's Michael and Michael, or Pikachu and Pikachu, they're totally different. They're different sizes, they're different weights, they have different strengths, and you want that one to be its own very best Pokemon. So this is a philosophy that applies to life that's really important and powerful and, and, and locked me in because we all should be contributing to each other's highest self. And that's the underlying theme of this game. It's like the best possible thing you could do. Take all of your friends and all the people you know and find what their superpower is and help them reach that superpower and spread it to the world and they help you reach that superpower and spread it into the world. I mean, this is the, there is no better game. If, if there's another game that does this, it's incredible. And the anime cartoon, that, that's the philosophy under, underneath that. I thought it was very simple at first and, and now I've realized the complexity of it. And, uh, and of course that keeps getting better as the animation world gets better and pretty soon they're gonna have a live CGI Pokemon in 3D <laughs> VR all around us. You know, a film, and the film actually, they, they, they are working on that. Um, yes, yes, there's a live action thing with a, a CGI Pikachu that goes through it, I believe. Wow. Uh-huh, and of course as technologies advance, where it, Pokemon Go and the Pokemon Corporation takes advantage of those to expand the brand and uh, you know most of it is really good because it's based on that underlying theory you teach me and I'll teach you it's all embedded in the song too to be the best that you can be and to make all of your Pokemon the best that they can be. When I catch the Pokemon on my Pokemon Go I rename them people that I know uh, and you know, and then I try to make them better and have that person in mind. And then when I see their person, then I'm all I'm contributing to them getting better too. So, yeah, absolutely. Any more questions, guys? So, Jason, hey, oh, we got one down here. Here we go. Um, what's your favorite Pokemon? Um, well, the electricity of Pikachu and and the the obvious you know, long-staying character power that this thing has to be strong and cute at the same time is pretty exceptional. And of course, it's Ash's best friend. He gets the most air time. And there, there's a Pikachu parade down the streets of, uh, in Japan every year. You have to, yeah, it's it. And I got hugged by two Pikachus today and only one Charmander, so. Um, <laughs> And you know what? It changes. Sometimes, you know, I, I like other ones, but the, the Pikachu always keeps coming back. Pikachu is, I mean, Pikachu is the mainstay of the franchise, so... It's a franchise. It's the best one. That's right, that's right. Any more questions, Jason, guys? Oh, we're in the corner here. Make your way across. Ask 
you ever thought to do any wrestling entrance music themes? Any what? Uh, wrestling entrance music themes. Wrestling entrance. WWE. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Hulk Hogan. <laughs> Look out, look out, here he comes. One of those things? He's gonna rock you! He's gonna rock you! Turn to the Mac, 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 Mac. Something like that? Yeah, I just thought about it just now. Oh, come on, guys, give a round of applause. Oh, right. That was good, yeah. Are you a, a wrestling character? That I, I'm not really sure who you are. Sorry. Power Ranger villain. Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Guys, any questions? We had a, a girl. Oh, at the oh, yeah. There we go. What gave you the inspiration to do the Pokemon theme song? Um, well, the Pokemon theme song, when it was recorded, was one of a hundred different sessions, as you call it, vocal sessions, that I would do every year. Um, so I worked for uh, this jingle house that was hired by four kids that was hired by the Pokemon Corporation in Japan. So uh, a, a stream of, of people made it happen. They wrote it and we recorded it for the demo version just for the TV to see if they liked it. So the inspiration was really based on the cartoon from Japan and something that fit their, their demographic, which is uh, discussed as 13 to 18 year old sounding male. So I kind of was in the 15 to 17 year old sound of my voice, which is, which is more like this sound right here. So, you know, it's, it's a little bit younger than I am now by a couple of years. Um, and so it was inspired basically by the outline that they had. And it changed a little bit and they changed a, a line here and there and changed from gotta catch them all. Or gotta catch them all, gotta catch them all. And I did a whole bunch of them at the end, and eventually they said, gotta catch them all. It was the right one for everybody. And, you know, we kind of work it out in the studio. And they liked it. And then everything else was just history from there. Awesome. Did you have one different? Do you want to be the best there ever was? <laughs> and um, your voice is very good, like, on point. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, I, I, I do, I do. I do want to be the best there ever was of the way that I can be in my own personal Pokemon evolution. Whereas everybody, I want, and I want everybody else to be the best that they can be the way that they express themselves. And, and I think that's really getting down to the heart of each of us and what our gifts are, what our inherent value is. Where can we exercise that value and give it to everybody else? And that's what I want to keep doing. And that keeps changing as I am influenced by so many people and so many experiences. My value changes and I, I accumulate more and then distribute it in many different ways. This is a brand new distribution channel for me to be able to be giving at these Comic Cons. This is only the third one that I've been to, the Cosplay Cons and Comic Cons. So uh, there's so many more for me to give at, and in each one I will develop new ways to share my gifts that I'm developing, as I will tomorrow in a brand new way that I've never done before, with a brand new group of people in a brand new paradigm that just a few years ago was uh, a third the size. This is only the second year of this event in this giant place, I think, right? And it just keeps growing every year exponentially. So, yes, I, I continue to strive to be the best that ever was. Well, I can like I speak for everyone here. We say that we're honored to have you here, Jason. So thank you very much. And an honor for me as well. Oh, awesome. One more in the back. Hey, we're coming across. I'm making my move. It's really incredible. We all want to have an impact in the world and we all want to share ourselves and, and create good things, but we don't know exactly how that's going to happen. So we just kind of pursue our own paths and, and dropping seeds of our 
of our efforts as we go. And you never know what seed is going to rise up and who's going to water those things. So it's fabulous to look back, but, but ultimately it's everybody here that has watered that seed to grow it into the empire, the, the empire, I would say that it is, in people's imaginations. Not even necessarily in terms of the, the, the products and the enterprise, but in the imagination of everybody, that's where it's growing the, the, the most flower and the most fruit, because it's ultimately the game, and the game is based on your imagination. And that part is the most powerful part that anybody has, is to exercise their imagination, and I think that's what it does the best. It gets you into your own imagination. And, and that's kind of what I do as a singer. I'm singing because I imagine myself in this creative flow. So it, it, it gets transferred. You just don't know how it's going to be transferred. Um, and I've, I've had the, you know, similar experiences with other products, but they don't inspire the imagination. They just inspire nausea, heartburn, indigestion. So that's, it's, it's, arguable that that's been heard by a lot of people as well but it doesn't feel as good as the thing that is heard by people that inspires their imagination and their play and their lives and their costumes and their travel now and their exercise and their these things it's just it's it's fabulous it's a fabulous wonderful feeling and and it's it's greater than any any uh, financial gain could ever bring um, and, and it's not really because of me, it's, I'm just a part of it, it's because of you guys. It's because of everybody else, and, and I think each person is, is feeling a little bit of that as they engage in the song, and, and that's what music does. It, it gets us into that place where we're inspired, where we let things go, and where we, we're just enveloped in a higher state, I think, so. Excellent, thank you, my question. Oh, okay, okay. Ling Doctor here. <laughs> How do you get Pikachu on the bus? How do I get Pikachu on the bus? Is that what he said? You get Pikachu on the bus, on the top of the bus. You get a ladder, and he climbs up to the top of the bus. And that's it. How do you get him inside the bus? You get him inside the bus, you, uh, you, you, poop. you put Pokemon. him in a Pokeball, right? You put him in through the Pokeball, is that it? <laughs> you Pokemon. Yeah, you Pokemon. <laughs> Duh. Guys, if you push the Pokemon. Front row. Oh, here we go. Front row. Front row. Um, how did you get into this? So how did you sort of realize, you know, this is the talent I have, this passion I have? Um, when I was two and a half and I started singing the ABC song to learn how to speak and write and read, I started singing as all, uh, almost all of us do, and that singing just didn't stop. It was encouraged throughout my childhood and into my more officially when I went to the High School of Music and Art, which is the thing I want to live forever movie about that school that specialized in vocal studies, dance, drama, or instrumental, and I specialized in vocal studies. Um, and then when I got out, I joined a couple of bands, and then I tried to make money singing because the bands were not making enough money, and that led me to do sessions and commercials and TV backgrounds for people, and that, of course, leads right into the Pokemon session for the jingle uh, for, the, for the TV show. Um, but it's a natural progression of the enthusiasm for singing, which doesn't stop if you don't stop it. But if people start telling you to shut up, stop, stop singing, stop making all that noise, and you have people that don't support you, then you stop singing. But everybody here can sing, I'm sure. And everybody's now breaking out into karaoke all the time. So even if you stop for a while, you're coming back to it. Any more questions, Jason, guys? So I mean, Jason, um, 
I noticed the other day that you've, you're listening against quite a few number of bands. So yes. Uh, as a singer, what, uh, what did you do with, uh, I think Kiss was one of the main ones? I saw, because I'm a big fan of Kiss, you say. Yes. Uh, Kiss, I've had a number of experiences with Paul Stanley. Paul Stanley is the guy with the star in Kiss, that guy. And he was, when I was 17, he was producing one of my bands. And he and I recorded vocals in the studio. And then many years later, he asked me to sing backgrounds on his album. And just recently, there was a record called The Art of McCartney. And they, all of the, uh, a whole bunch of classic rock people, Billy Joel, Rod, Roger Daltrey, uh, Smokey Robinson even, and Kiss had songs of Paul McCartney's that they covered, and I sang backgrounds on a whole bunch of them. So, in and out, I have these little contacts with, uh, with Paul Stanley. Um, they also toured with Aerosmith for a while, and a friend of mine is in that band, was in that band for a while, and I saw them on tour with that, so he, the Kiss keeps popping up. and. Cosplay. I mean, uh, are there guys dressed as Kiss here? To see anybody see Kiss here? No. Oh, strangely, yeah. Yep. There it is. Kiss was here. <laughs> guys, any more questions, Jason? Today? All right, the back again. Okay. I'll come back to the front as you. Uh, I know you don't celebrate birthdays. You celebrate uh, like. Birth giving days. Yeah. That's right. Is that like, uh, like, a, tra tra like a tradition or is that? Yes, yeah. it's a tradition. Uh, I'm an only child, but but at some point it occurred to me that I have no memory of this day and that if I were to have a child with somebody else, obviously I can't have it myself, um, that that day would be so much more significant in my actual memory and I started thinking about my mother and oh my god, this unbelievable, ethereal, incredible experience that she has, this magical thing to reproduce another human, to make another human being that day is unmatched by anything else that a, 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 a human being can experience. I can't think of anything else that you could create more significant than another human being. And the day is specifically known by her and my father and her first. So I started celebrating her and giving to her on my birthday because I, I just felt awkward and uncomfortable with everybody congratulating me and no. Uh, I'm like I made it another year. I didn't die. Like it's a holiday about me not dying for another year. No, it's a holiday honoring this incredible thing that she did, that she chose, that far uh, exceeds anything I can ever do because I'm a guy. So I started honoring her and uh, singing Happy Birth Giving Day to you to her instead of singing Happy Birthday to me. And then I directed my friends to hit her up on Facebook and give her gifts, and I think it's just great. The only time it doesn't really work out is if a woman has had, like, you have brothers and sisters, and she's got six kids, and now she has six birth giving days, and then it gets a little uneven there. But, but for me, it's, that, that's the most massive thing in, 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 a, in a human being's life that could possibly happen. If any of you have children at any time or have, you know this is true. Unless, yeah. Uh, we'll go to the question in the front. Um, it's actually a question about your Pokeballs on your outfit. Yes. Do they have anything inside of them? Yes, they do. These are the Jason Page entire catalog of music that I, I, I you know, people are signing these, these pieces of paper and they walk away with a piece of paper and a picture and I have USB poke drives and I can put all of the pictures that I would sign on the poke drive. It's 600 gigabytes worth of music, photos, and videos. All of the Pokemon career and all of the different things. The Poke Rock theme song. A poke pick, pick it up, gotta get that call. Ringtones, videos, the Viridian City, the re-record of the Pokemon song, all of my greatest hits, all the crazy jingles and stupid things that I've sung, Subway Eat Fresh, and weird stuff that you, you know, don't know that I did, but it's all on the, on the drive, and it's a Pokeball, and I was like, this is the best thing for the Comic-Con, this is way better than some piece of paper that somebody walks away with, and I could sign it, really, really small, 
And then after you take all the stuff off of it, and there's unreleased jams and all my other music that's more traditional, more uh, well, very different, but a lot of a lot of uh, two unreleased albums on here that I'm also that are also available. And afterwards, you've got a drive that you can wear around. And if somebody says, "Hey, take this off my computer," you got a four gigabyte drive right there, ready to go. I just got some that are little Pikachu's, and uh, I'm gonna have those at the next event too. So. And that's that's what that's all about. And the red and the blue ones sold out. That's why all green and purple and yellow. Now. So, but they're over there if you want them to, afterwards. They don't catch Pokemon though. Only well, really small ones. Yeah, that one does. <laughs> right, exactly. Any more questions, guys? Okay. So I'm somewhat a uh, voice artist. Um, what advice can you give to somebody who wants to become a voice artist? Um, a voice acting. Voice acting, voice acting. Well, like I said, I, I think we spoke a bit earlier about this. Uh, all of my, most of my voice acting is is singing. So that's, that's through the singing path and diversity is the key in that. And I think um, in terms of being a voice actor from just speaking and doing characters and things like that, you you imitate things and you build a reel of you imitating things. You can record on anything. You can you record on your phone with a good microphone now. So, and edit that reel together and just share it online and um, use those, you, you, there's different apps and different ways that you can spread this, but imitation is the best way to, to learn and expand your voice and your ideas and, and what you want to do. And, you try to, it's like working out at the gym to, to imitate all, the, all of these characters. Um, and I make most of my, uh, my, most of my jobs have, but they're, they're not the same thing. They always want something different. There's a different uh, need for every different product. So that's how I keep myself broad and growing as a voice artist. Um, Nothing worse than just having one thing and, and only doing that one thing. I think that's when I would get bored if I was only the one thing. It's just kind of that same question as before. But yeah, put your stuff online. Make it happen. Awesome. Guys, any more questions for Jason today? Okay, Jason. So, um, away from the sort of Pokemon thing, I know you've done some movie stuff as well. You mentioned like Joe Pesci. And, correct, correct. Right. Um, what's probably your favorite project that you've ever worked on? Um, well, the, the, the for the record shows are the, are the favorite the favorite thing. But I just recently did uh, a song in a movie called Sausage Party that is just hysterical. It's incredible. I'm I'm five or six different characters in the song. Um, the movie is absurd. I don't know if you know you have to really. It's not PG. It, but it's animated, and I didn't see anybody dressed as any of the sausage party. Is there a sausage party character here? Anybody see a, a, a hot dog running around? Or a, a teriyaki sauce guy? But it's, a, it, it was, it's an incredible, incredibly funny thing. So, and then just recently, that, that's something that I really enjoyed doing. Um, and doing characters in films is, is really nice, especially when they're singing, because it's... It's uh, it's different than the than the talking and movie songs go a little bit further. And just going back to Pokemon, um, the there is the album as well of the Pokemon album. It wasn't like recording that and you know putting all that together. Uh, yeah, the, after the TV show was greenlit, and uh, I guess within the first six to eight months, they said we got to make a full theme song. We have to extend it, put a second verse in there and a solo and the Viridian City song as well. And both companies, two different producers did those songs. They were producers that I had worked with before. Um, and that album was incredible. And the song then transferred onto radio. And it wasn't just on the TV anymore. It started getting played on the radio in its full version. And then it, that, it just went everywhere from that point. It was on Radio Disney, number one song for quite a while. Which is pretty cool. All right, guys. Any more questions out there? Here we go. The front door again. Yeah, no front door. Hey, um, you said that you weren't really sort of 
known at the forefront of Pokemon until like a year or so ago. So how does it feel sort of going from how it was in sort of 1998 when you first recorded it to now when people sort of recognise you and sort of know who you are and what you've done? It, it's really, it's really good. I mean, I, 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 I kind of wish it were does, was a little bit earlier. Now that I see how much value there is and how the wonderful enthusiasm. Um, but at the same time, I wouldn't want my life to have been only about that. And and um, it is it is it is quite different uh, because I've never gone out there and performed anything that I've done that was just a session before. Oh, that, that's wrong. There was one weird thing I did in Holland where I was a voice in a commercial for a fake band in the commercial, and then the commercial became big and they made the band thing into a video. It's called The One The Voice. And it was a fake band based on the video. But besides that, and that was just one, one time we did that. Uh, besides that, I've never represented myself in, from a corporate project. Um, and, and this is really good because it, it, though it is, it was a paid gig in the beginning, it's more of a love now, and it's more because of the culture of Pokemon and the, the enthusiasm, and also to introduce the Pokemon community to other art that I create, and I get a lot of wonderful comments and enthusiasm from people watching my other videos and other things that I do that can impact them in more profound ways than the Pokemon song does, or, or in different ways, but yeah. Yes, yeah. There we go. Thank you. So, thank you. Thank you for coming out today and obviously yes. seeing us here. That's really awesome of you. Um, after you've gone today, where can people catch up with you again? I know, I know you've got YouTube. Uh, what was yes, the yes. You kind of the YouTube channel. And uh, I'm just getting into the Twitch thing now because all the gamers are saying, oh, we want to see you on Twitch. We want to see you on Twitch. So, I set up a Twitch channel and I'm going to start building followers on there. YouTube followers, jasonpage.com, obviously. And they're going to migrate everybody onto Twitch so that I can stream to people live and uh, get connected with the community instantly. It's a really great platform if you guys haven't, haven't been on it. And it's not just for games anymore. They have all kinds of categories and people doing all kinds of things. There's a cosplay category on it where people are making costumes and, and twitching that out. It's, a, it's pretty cool. And it's also an Amazon company, so I think they're going to be around a while. It's not just going to fall away like some others have. Excellent. Well, thank you for joining us here today. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, give a big round of applause, please, for Jason Page. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>